coming up tonight on Prime Time Local News. Father Gorman's new playground gets a progress update. And City Council works on getting a new air service in Lloydminster. Plus our weekly edition of Pet Project. Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. The rebuilding of the playground at Father Gorman is nearing completion. Our Lane Hofford gives us an update on the progress and the community, the community support for the project. The brand new playground at Father Gorman Community School is due to be fully finished and functioning on November 1st, nearly two and a half months after the previous one was burned down. Lloyd Minster Mayor Gerald Albers believes that the efficient completion of the playground is in large part due to community members coming together to support the rebuilding process. Well, the school board uh, immediately after the fire, I understand, contacted their insurance provider and reached out to the community. And this is what you see what happens when you reach out to our community. Yeah, action. And that was tremendous. So we've had various businesses support it, individuals, nonprofit organizations. Uh, the, community, the city's been here to help support as well as working with the school board. Mayor Albers believes that the outpouring of support from local businesses and organizations to resurrect the playground shows how Lloydminster residents band together to support important causes both within the community and outside of it. Our city has year after year stepped up for in the city or outside the city. And I can take you back to the fires of Fort Mac, recently Jasper, other issues of natural disasters. And in this case, this, is, this, is a, this was a disaster with the fire. And what's happened is the city and the community has risen up together to, to bring it back. The new Father Gorman playground is not a carbon copy of its predecessor. Various improvements have been made to the playground. Many of the upgrades were put in to make playing outside easier for children with disabilities. That was super important for staff to have the accessibility for all of our students as we do have a lot of students with special needs and not even just at the school but for the community too. It's, it's great to have that opportunity so that everybody can play together and have fun together at school. The completed playground is sure to be a staple for both Father Gorman students as well as other children in Lloyd for many years to come. Lane Hoffert, Primetime Local News. Since WestJet has closed its services in Lloydminster, City Council is hard at work attempting to put a new carrier in its place. An aviation consulting company was brought in to conduct a commercial air service feasibility study as well as update their current airport master plan. As it stands now, Lloydminster is still looking for carriers. Conversations have been ongoing since WestJet left with various carriers uh, from that perspective, but also realizing that we have to make arrangements or the a potential company has to make arrangements for planes, pilots, staff to staff that, as well as at this end, ensuring that there's someone at the gate that will serve that customer and uh, from that perspective. So the report showcases the airport's economic development and provides statistics air services can use to determine whether Lloydminster is reasonable for business. We'll be working extensively with administration, our consultants and the industry to restore service as soon as we can. Will that happen today or tomorrow? No, but it will be uh, as soon as possible. There is a little bit of lead time required, so uh, there'll be a lot of emphasis put on administration and, and council to keep this moving forward. The full airport master plan and feasibility study can be viewed on Lloydminster.ca. Some changes will be coming to the council chambers after this municipal election. However, some councillors have decided to rerun for another term. Michael Diachuk is seeking a third term serving the Lloydminster area. Diachuk is proud to be able to call Lloydminster home and wants to continue to support it. We know that in our seniors housing we have wait lists to get in. Seniors accommodations between here and Edmonton, they have vacancies. Uh, we're fortunate in that it doesn't cost us any money, but the problem we see is, is needing to upgrade our facilities. And what do we do with that where we have seniors living longer so they're not, you know, moving on. Uh, they're staying, you know, aging in place kind of strategies that are out there. Uh, but there's the whole notion of affordability, which is still an issue that I think is a challenge for us in our community around housing. 
Dyachuk has been a part of numerous committees since joining council, including the Public Art Committee, where he found a newfound appreciation for the city since joining. And I think it really is important for uh, sensitizing and desensitizing, I think, and, and acclimatizing people to expect that we should have art in our community, that a community that is, that is enriched, that is healthy, will have art, and we should begin to see that as an expectation. The municipal election takes place on November 13th. The third edition of Trunk or Treat was at the Lloydminster Exhibition alongside the Lloydminster and District Co-op. Favorite float? It's got to be that bus back there. Bus back there? What's so cool about it? It's just a decoration in the general area. The Culligan Water Building was filled up with trunks from a variety of businesses in Lloydminster, as well as all sorts of kids in creative and creepy costumes. Obviously, as you can see, it's a great turnout. It's so much fun. Um, it's safe trick-or-treating in a warm environment. It gives people the excuse to get together and collaborate and have uh, their trunks. We have a whole bunch of different businesses that are here, and it gives people a sense of community to come and be able to trick-or-treat and visit, and it's just so nice. It's, it's awesome. The event was once again a great success, and there are already plans in place to help improve the event for next year. For next year, we're hoping to open up uh, this event a little bit early to make it uh, an occlusion event. So we're going to do um, a little bit more lights, less sound, and make it more um, accessible and for sensory. The Fall Harvest Collective Market is planned for this Saturday. Stacy Comer has more. It's that time again of the year where markets are starting and it's a great time to think about Christmas gifts and maybe even find something for yourself, which is always fun. And, and with that, we have a Harvest Collective Market coming up this weekend. Terry Hauser is joining me. Terry, thank you so much for speaking with me once again. Thank you for having me once again. Well, Terry, let's talk about the market this weekend. So I know it's not Christmas yet, but it still might be a good chance uh, to go through some of these things and some of the vendors and maybe pick up some stocking stuffers and, and even some gifts for, for yourself, if you like. Absolutely. It's always a good idea to spoil yourself. So <laughs> I love that idea. But yeah, shopping early for Christmas is never a bad idea. Um, you know, money's tight for a lot of people right now. So you can kind of spread things out a little bit, shop early and um, support some local vendors as well in the process. Do you know how many vendors you have for this Saturday's event? We actually have the most we've ever had. We have 43 this time. So we've squeezed a couple extra people in. Um, and it's a really good mix of jewelry, home decor, clothing, um, food, like lots of good consumable things. So um, yeah, really good mix of vendors, but 43 this time, which is great. And for those who haven't been to the market before, can you just describe a little bit about how it works? It really is kind of a relaxed atmosphere and just go at your own pace. Yeah, absolutely. It's a pretty small market. Like it's not as big as some of the other um, ones that you'll see in the area. Um, so again, 43 vendors. It's just at the Nissan Hall at the exhibition. So a little bit of a smaller venue. Uh, we have a cash bar. You can grab a mimosa or a Lake Life Caesar or whatever your drink of choice is. Um, sip and shop and wander. We've got like a fun playlist that you can just kind of just relax and enjoy and, and yeah, check out some local vendors. There is an opportunity as well to support charity. You guys always do this with your markets and this time it's the olive tree. So how can people help out when they come to the market and support the olive tree? Yeah, so we um, don't have an admission fee in lieu of admission. We always select a local organization. This time it is the olive tree. Um, so if you're, if you're able to bring a non-perishable food, donation or we'll also be accepting monetary donations at the door as well so if you're able to bring something great if you're not able to that's okay too we'd just love to have you there what are the hours on saturday terry uh so we'll be open from 10 till 4 um yeah at the nissan hall at the exhibition and this isn't the last market for the year uh, as we said uh, earlier there will be a christmas one coming up a little bit later as well so can you start accepting uh, people now for that uh, coming market uh, later in the year too? Uh, people who, uh, who want to, to bring a booth who maybe haven't been into this before? Right. Um, so we actually are just finalizing our vendor lineup already. These things are 
months in advance or right. <laughs> so um but we do have a wait list um if you've got a small business um our market is all handmade so it has to be a handmade business um but yeah if you have a handmade business and you're interested in joining us head to our website and you can fill out the wait list application there um and spaces open up from time to time things come up and people can't make it so we do utilize that wait list um every market basically so so yeah if you haven't heard of us and this is your first time definitely check out the website and get your application in well terry it's been a pleasure speaking with you and this is just such a nice great relaxing event you can make it a fun day for the family to go out or even you know if you need to get out of the house and get away from the kids <laughs> you can yeah, go and, exactly. and do some shopping as well so terry once again just the location and the hours for the harvest collective market on saturday yeah, so it's 10 till 4 at Nissan Hall at the Lloyd X. Um, and we've got Facebook, Instagram, and our website is harvestcollectivemarket.com if you want to check out all the details there as well. All right. Well, thanks for chatting with me today, Terry, and good luck with the market. Thank you. Thanks for having me again. We are well into fall here in the border city and it is chilly. Yes, definitely. Despite the sun today, it was definitely cold. You wouldn't yeah. think the sun was out unless it's, you stared right at it. It's but, not doing anything But I us. will say, silver lining, it wasn't a, it's better than gloomy weather on top of the cold. Yeah. But we did see a very cold day today uh, and we are still under that. Uh, we still have that wind chilled. With the wind chill, it feels closer to minus two, but we are sitting at three degrees and we did see it was gloomier in the morning, but it, those clouds did break away throughout the day and we did end up with some sun this afternoon, which was nice. However, quite windy as well, 24 kilometer per hour wind. So things definitely are cooler and chilly. And then at current temperatures across Alberta, four degrees in Marwain, Bonneville, Cold Lake, Lac La Biche, and Provost, five in St. Paul, Vermilion, Wainwright, eight out in in Edmonton, six in Vegreville. And then in Saskatchewan, zero degrees in Isle of Cross, one in Green Lake, Meadow Lake, four or two now in Green Lake, four in Pierceland, three in St. Wahlberg, Maidstone and Macklin, and zero also out in North Battleford. And then overnight tonight in North Battleford will drop just below zero at minus two. And those sky skies will remain mainly clear. A few clouds here and there, 15 kilometer per hour winds, but it will be quite chilly out. And then tomorrow, a daytime high of just nine degrees, uh, milder uh, and plenty of sunshine. So it's going to be a nice day out tomorrow. Uh, it may feel chillier just because of that nine, 15 kilometer per hour winds, uh, but it is going to be nice and sunny. Overnight tonight in Cold Lake will also be just below zero, minus one. Uh, and otherwise, it will become cloudy overnight tonight. 17 kilometer per hour wind, so it is going to be on the windier side. And then tomorrow, expect cloudy, gloomy conditions out. 15 kilometer per hour winds and a daytime high of just seven degrees. And then overnight tonight here in Lloydminster will drop down to minus one. We'll be partially cloudy uh, and 20 kilometer per hour wind. So our wind speeds won't change that much. It will remain quite windy overnight tonight. So definitely make sure you have your heaters on. And if you are going outside, make sure you are bundled up and staying warm and safe. And then tomorrow to break down the day, one degrees by 6 a.m. Uh, mostly cloudy, 20 kilometer per hour winds. That will continue into noontime where that wind speed will remain. Five degrees, partially sunny. So we'll have a mix of sun and clouds similar to what we saw today. Four degrees by 6 p.m. It should get up to about seven degrees and then uh, it will be about 15 kilometer per hour winds and then by midnight those clouds will thicken up and it will be quite cloudy. Two degrees by midnight, 13 kilometer per hour winds. And then like I said, over the next three days, a high of seven for tomorrow and then we'll have a low of minus one. On Thursday, the wind will start to increase more. A mix of sun and cloud with a high of eight and a low of minus three. Three. The low of minus three will also be on Friday with a high of nine and we should have a very sunny day out. So that's always nice to look forward to despite those chillier conditions. But make sure you are bundled up when you are going outside. That's a first look at your evening weather forecast. We'll have more news coming up after the break. An event at the Moose Lodge in Lloydminster is coming up this weekend where people can bring out their Halloween spirit and costumes. Our Jackson Fontaine caught up with the administrator of the lodge to discuss the event. 
Today I'm at the Moose Lodge with Susan Culp, who is the administrator of the lodge. How are you doing today, Susan? I'm doing fine, thank you. So tell me a little bit about this Dance the Night Away event you guys got coming up. Okay, so the Dance the Night event is this Saturday, the 26th of October, and it is uh, in celebration of the fall. And how, how can people purchase tickets for okay. this event? Tickets can be purchased at the hall or just by phoning and letting us know that you're going to be attending. Uh, number is 780-875-7919. And uh, we want to sort of have a rough idea of how much food to prepare for our, our late lunch. So what time would that late lunch be at? Is it an all night thing or is it all uh, day? Dance starts at eight and the lunch will probably be around 10.30. 11 o'clock and then dance goes until midnight. And uh, what are we kind of thinking for lunch? Like burgers, pizza? We are looking at turkey. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. A good little late Thanksgiving meal, I should say. Yes, yeah, yeah. We, and, yeah. And um, is this the first time this event is going on or has it been going on a few, a few years? Now? We had a dance earlier in the year and we had one last year, but we called it different things as, as uh, the year goes on. Yeah. And uh, final question, why do you guys have an event like this? Well, we are, the purpose of the lodge is to, of the Moose, is for children, seniors, um, and the community. And so we're having this to invite the community over and, and have some fun. And there's not too many dances where a family can go to. So this is one of the reasons we're having it, is because we'd like to have our own families come to this dance, and it's fun, yeah. So when you say family, so like all ages are? All, all ages, yes, yeah. We had one where there was uh, people from eight months to 80 some years old, and it was a fun dance. Well, it's good to ha yeah. get the family out, and it should be another great event here at the yeah. Moose Lodge. Thanks for taking the time okay. to do this, good. Susan. Thank you. Abby St. John is back at Border Paws Animal Shelter for our weekly edition of Pet Project. I'm back at Border Paws Animal Shelter for our weekly edition of Pet Project. And today we're in the multi-purpose room. And if you can kind of hear him, uh, we are discussing Rusty. He is a gorgeous, most handsome boy. And he is, you, he just, he exudes happiness. He does. Um, he's like those happy dancing dogs. So tell me about his story and what his best fit would be. <laughs> so Rusty has been with us since the 29th of September. He was found over by the casino, gambling with his life, crossing the busy street. Uh, luckily, he has made it to us, and he gets his last shot of uh, shots today, his last round of shots, and he's available for adoption <laughs> immediately. <laughs> he's got ants in his pants. <laughs> he's a dancer. He yeah. loves to play. He's such a sweet boy. He, he really is. Ever since he came in here, he has just been sweet and just full of energy. <laughs> now, what would you recommend his his fit would be? Single pet hold? Would he work well with other he dogs? He loves cats? other dogs. Rusty's a sweetheart. So, it, yeah, he's very much wants to play with other dogs. Some of them aren't fans of, of him, but he absolutely loves everybody. He's a little nervous around cats, um, but he absolutely loves he absolutely loves people. Yeah. He is such a sweet boy. He just, right, exudes happiness. Yeah. He is just, he's got such a spark for life still. Like, he's. And I feel like the only way for kids, let's all go on that, because that's also very important. I feel like if you just, he may barrel down a few kids. He's but not he's, very mindful. No, but he, <laughs> he is. He will give your children nothing but love. And I can Absolutely. already tell that just by the few minutes just seeing him even before we started, he's just so sweet and he definitely would make even a group of children he would probably make the best companion <laughs> absolutely oh. he is i think he he exudes the definition of man's best friend for sure and he loves bum scratches <laughs> he absolutely loves his bum scratches no he is almost available for adoption he's just getting his last round of shots and it's perfect because you have an adoption event going on yes. tell me about that it is a week <laughs> It's a week-long event. 
Okay, so, so what do people need to know about it? So we are at PetSmart every day this week until the 26th. Uh, lots of fuzzy critters there, some cats and some dogs from 2 to 6 p.m. every day this week. So come on down and check it out. Have lots of lots of fuzzy critters looking for their forever homes. Oh, and those events are always so successful for you, especially the PetSmart PetSmart events. Uh, we've talked about this before. Now, uh, you have your Halloween event coming up, yes. and we are going to be talking later this week more specifically on it. So for now, let's just uh, go through what you are still in need of. I believe you still are looking for some volunteers if, if anybody is interested in helping out. So tell me about that, what you're looking for specifically in, in their volunteers. So if anybody is interested in volunteering, we are looking for characters for our haunted house, people who can take admission, help pass out candy, uh, that kind of stuff help us set some things up uh, take stuff down at the end so if you're interested in that you can either call the shelter our number is 780-875-2809 or you can email us at info at borderpaws.ca now, last week we mentioned the sick and injured fund. That's a, that is still a very important topic, and I think we're going to bring that up a few for a, for a while now. So, tell me about that sick and injured fund and how people can donate. So, our sick and injured fund goes 100% fully towards animals that are in need of medical care. We did have a, a, a dog, a shepherd, Quilly, who had a pretty nasty run-in with a porcupine and she had to have multiple procedures. Um, it did deplete the fund quite a bit. <laughs> um, but those kinds of, in order for us to be able to keep our adoption fees down, uh, the donations for that really, really help us out. And if you are interested in donating to our Sick and Injured Fund, there is a link on our website and on our Facebook page. You can also come to the shelter and make a donation in person. Because um, honestly, we, we do as, as much as we are able. And those kinds of things go a really long way for these guys. <laughs> yes, it really does, and it is vital. It, it, it's important because it goes back towards the dogs that need it, yeah. and the cats, and any animal that do um, end up in your care for the time being as yeah. well. Now, uh, going off of monetary donations, this is the same question as every week, the physical donations. Yes. What are you in need of? We are in need of the Canadian Naturals dog food. We use the lamb and brown rice, uh, the Canadian Naturals cat food, turkey and salmon. We're looking for... <laughs> <laughs> Bleach and floor cleaners, slow feeders, we need toilet paper, um, winter's coming up, uh, a snow blower or snow shovel uh, would be greatly appreciated. Um, sugar for the coffee station because we do provide coffee, we have a little for guests who come in to take a look. and. Um, we're also in need of like uh, the Kong toys because a lot of our dogs are larger breeds and they can get kind of rough on that kind of stuff. Hey buddy? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Wonderful. Rusty was a fantastic guest and I know that he will make the perfect companion for any household. And a uh, little side note, any of the donation items that we mention on Pet Project are also um, good for admission into the haunted house this weekend. We do have an approved donation list. Wonderful. But if there's anything mentioned on here that we didn't have on the list, you, it, it can still apply to the admission. Perfect, and that's wonderful in lieu of uh, of admission, having a little donation item is all, it goes a long way as well. So thank you again for joining me. And again, we'll talk later this week more so in depth about the Halloween Haunted House event and what people and everything that people should know for this weekend and into next week. So thank you. Thank you so much. And it's time now to take a look at your adorable animals in our pet picks of the day. We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to have them featured on Pet of the Day.
taking a final look at our evening weather forecast. We saw a sunnier day than we saw yesterday, which was nice. Always nice to see despite it still being cold. The sun really didn't do much, uh, but it is four degrees here in Lloydman. So we also saw quite a windy day as well. Uh, so it made things feel a little bit cooler around minus two with that windshield. Four degrees also out in Cold Lake, Athabasca and White Court. Seven out in Red Deer and Edson. Eight out in Edmonton. Six in Jasper and in Saskatchewan. A little bit cooler of temperature. Temperatures 2 degrees out in Meadow Lake, minus 1 in Prince Albert and Saskatoon, minus 2 out in Melfort and 0 in North Battleford. And then if we head up north in Saskatchewan, uh, we're all below zero uh, on the Saskatchewan side. Minus two in Uranium City, minus three in Stony Rapids and South End, minus four in Wollaston Lake, minus one in Laloche, Buffalo Narrows and in Flin Flon. In Alberta up north, zero out in Fort Chippewan, one in Fort Mac, minus one in High Level, four in Peace River, five in Grand Prairie and three out in Slave Lake. Down south in Alberta, a little bit warmer, zero out in Coronation 5 in Calgary and Banff 11 in Lethbridge and 3 in Medicine Hat. In Saskatchewan, minus 1 in Kindersley, 2 in Yorkton and in Regina, 3 in Estevan and Moose Jaw and 0 in Swift Current. Overnight tonight in North Battleford, minus 2 will be overnight temperatures. Mainly clear skies, 15 kilometer per hour wind, so it may feel a little bit chillier uh, due to that minus 2, but it is still is predicted to be nice out. Cold Lake overnight tonight, those clouds will start to increase as the evening goes on, so it'll be a little bit gloomier heading into tomorrow. 17 kilometer per hour winds with minus one uh, degrees as your overnight temperature, so it will be quite cold out. And then overnight across the region, below zero is the trend. Minus two in Meadow Lake, Provost in Isla Cross, minus one in Bonneville, and minus three out in Paradise Hill. Uh, mostly cloudy skies in the majority of those areas, clear skies out in Provost, however, and the those wind speeds between 11 and 15 kilometer per hour winds. More overnight temperatures across the region. Minus one in Myrna, minus three in Pierceland, Unity, and in Wainwright. Zero out in Calgary and mainly clear in those areas. A little bit of cloud coverage in Myrna and Pierceland. Overnight tonight here in Lloydminster will drop down to minus one. Partially cloudy skies and that wind will still be quite strong at 20 kilometers per hour. And then over the next seven days, a high of seven for tomorrow. Low of minus one mix of sun and cloud. And then on Thursday, that wind will start to pick up with a high of eight and a low of minus three. And then on Friday, expect sunny conditions with a high of nine, low of minus three as well. And then on Saturday, it warms up just a tad with a high of 11. Mix of sun and cloud, however, breezy as well. Into Sunday, a mix of sun and cloud with a high of nine, high of eight on Monday, mostly cloudy, however. And then it becomes sunny again on Tuesday with a high of four. Um, so it will cool off next week, but we kind of are in that mid. We are mid in the single, decline. Yeah. yeah, we're in the high single digits or low double digits. Uh, and but we are seeing that sun out. So that's always nice. And there's no rain or, rain or snow for, for either. right now. But for keep right your now. fingers crossed on it could, that. Could change, but at least for now, it's good to see sunny skies for the uh, upcoming week. Exactly. But that is all the time we have today for Primetime Local News. Thanks so much for watching and have a great night.